my, my main question is actually um, something you said a couple lectures ago. It was something along the lines of uh, family, um, sorry, I'm, um, like uh, this, the history of your family, kind of like the sins of your family, something like that. Yeah. You, uh, you're facing it all the time. Yeah. What's, uh, can you expand on that more? Well, there's this idea in the Old Testament that your sins might be visited unto your family seven generations down. Seems kind of harsh. But, you know, when you're confronting, maybe your father's tyrannical. Yeah, but, you know, maybe his father beat the hell out of him. And maybe his father's father was a vicious alcoholic. And you just bloody well don't know how far back that goes. And, and that means also you don't exactly know what you're dealing with. Right? To some degree, you're dealing with your father, but only partly what you're dealing with is the pathological paternal spirit, something like that. And it's better to think about that way because it becomes an existential issue at that point. You know, so you could say that, well, the father has two components, and I, I mean this psychologically speaking, there's the great father that's beneficial and protective and that, that, that organizes society and teaches you how to speak and has produced all these wonderful things, and then there's the tyrannical, oppressive part of the father. Just like there's the terrible part of Mother Nature that's destructive and the benevolent part of Mother Nature that's wonderful and productive. And you're stuck with that, right? You're stuck with having to mediate between those opposing forces, just like you're stuck with the adversarial part of yourself and the heroic part of yourself. And it's up to you to set those things right. Otherwise, they propagate into the future. And it isn't a, st a straightforward thing to say how to set them right. There's quite a good movie about that. Um, oh, no, I won't. Magnolia, which I really love. It's by Paul Anderson, if I remember correctly. I hope that's right. It's a beautiful movie. And it, it's about this, part of it's about this kid whose father's really pushing him to be a superstar at a, at a quiz show, right? He's a genius kid, eh? And uh, the kid studies this guy named Charles Fort. You don't understand this movie if you don't know this, because you've got to know about Charles Fort to understand Magnolia. Charles Fort was this weird old guy who got rich with an inheritance when he was like 20 and spent the rest of his life in libraries looking up impossible things and documenting them. Impossible things that couldn't happen from a scientific perspective, that were well attested to by multiple observers. And he produced this newspaper called the Fortean Times, which still runs. Anyways, in, in Magnolia, Magnolia begins with this guy who falls out of a building and then is shot by a woman who misses her husband with a rifle as he falls. And I think she's, uh, she's charged with murder. And the street names have something to do with the deaths and his fall and all of that happened. And then in the movie, there's a rain of frogs. And there are rains of frogs from time to time. Sometimes they're frozen. Sometimes they're rains of fish. Sometimes they're frozen. It's like, what the hell? How does that happen? It happens quite frequently, as it turns out. There's a rain of frogs in the, in the uh, movie Magnolia. And this little kid, see, what happened to him is that he's on stage, and uh, he ends up peeing his pants because of the pressure, basically, and humiliates himself. And then there's this rain of frogs which he kind of takes as a sign from God. And then he goes to his father, even he's like eight years old, this kid, and he says, you have to stop doing this to me. And he's dead serious about it, very careful, not being, you know, what would you call it, insubordinate, nothing like that. He decides that that's coming to an end right now. And you have to make those decisions in your family because otherwise things propagate down the generations, right? And every family is rife with pathologies of one form or another. And you can learn from that and refuse to push it forward and that's part of I think what you do when you when you when you shoulder your existential burden because everyone is the beneficiary and the victim of the tyrannical father just like everyone is the beneficiary and the victim of mother nature and of themselves and so you lock horns with that and straighten it out one way or another and you don't move it forward to the next generation so and maybe you detach it a bit from your parents, too, because God only knows what combination of catastrophes culminated in their particular forms of pathology. So, good enough. <laughs>